You're welcome back. One of the fastest growing businesses or developments in any community now is tech. And when you look around, the tech, uh, tech community rather is, is growing in Nigeria even. But there still are very many challenges that the people in that industry are facing. And so today we're going to be talking with a tech, a tech expert and uh, his name is Kenechuku Odaje. Kenechuku, good morning and welcome to the run-up. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's good to be talking with a tech expert and quality assurance engineer. Now, we know that tech is a growing trend. Tech is what we now depend on for a lot of things. Tell us more about the future of tech in the Nigerian economy, for instance. Um, the Nigerian economy has a um, great future when it comes to technology development. Um, having in mind our growing population, which is now over 200 million. So we have the human capacity and we have the able hands to drive this technology development and innovations to a greater height. Okay, so um, sometimes when people talk about tech and the need to develop it, the need to develop that sector of our economy or whatever, um, they talk about the challenges that are faced by people who want to venture into that. Can you please throw more light on some of these challenges that people in that industry face in Nigeria? Oh, there are lots of um, challenges when it comes to technology and uh, technology developments in Nigeria. We can talk about the, um, the challenging environment itself, you know, the poor electricity, the access to, there is no access to funds, uh, poor internet quality, you know, and also um, lack of, not lack of, but inadequate IT infrastructure. These are major challenges. Well, when you talk about IT That's infrastructure, what do you what do you mean? In Nigeria, in the space of information technology development. Yeah, you say IT infrastructure. What do you really mean by IT infrastructure? So, um, in, in IT infrastructure development is uh, having the infrastructure that can accommodate a huge number of technology transactions. In a period in a period of time whether in a day in a week in a month but having that capacity to handle digital transactions okay whether is at the at the pain of tax level at the corporate affairs commission level i mean in our it solutions that we as citizens of nigeria use daily that will that would involve millions of Nigerians accessing this solution, accessing this software solution, we need to provide an infrastructure that can accommodate huge transactions. Give us some of the examples all, of what you mean. Give us some of the examples you, of what you mean. Okay, most like I mentioned, I mean, for instance, maybe you're trying to access a corporate affairs commission, um, portal for an example and the response to this um, so software solution could be slow so we need to look into how we can improve the infrastructure i'm just using this as an illustration mm. there are also different um, sectors where this has to happen this has to take place so we need to improve the capacity of these infrastructures to accommodate daily digital transactions. When I mean transactions, it could be performing any operation, but is derived digitally. Oh, well, tech is one of the um, sectors of our economy that has grown more or less without the help of government, as it were. Uh, but when you begin to mention the challenges, are you placing these challenges at the doorstep of the government or private sector? Where do you think the solutions to these problems that are faced by the tech industry are coming from 
or should come from? I mean, the government can the government can do a whole lot when it comes to IT development infrastructure. Just like I mentioned in the challenges earlier, we have a challenging environment is a known factor. We have a challenging environment. So first, we have to understand that we need to have an enabling environment. There are several tech startups. For instance, um, in Lagos, there are some frustrating processes of conducting business. Maybe we're having um, stifling policies from the government, and um, it's affecting the tech startup. Mm. So with this um, challenging environment, if the government can make the environment, the technology ecosystem to be less challenging and make and simplify the processes we can solve that challenging environment problems and um, secondly i talked about poor electricity we need constant electricity inadequate electricity is another major problem faced by so many tech firms in nigeria and it affects solutions development and what have you in the information technology space? Hmm. Then I made mention of um, I made mention of access to funding. People have innovative ideas, but they would want to have funding to promote their solution, their innovative ideas. And the countries that we have seen in the past that have tried with information technology, like China and the rest leveraged on innovation and the government um, participated by helping providing funds for innovation and research because it's research that gives birth to innovation so in a country where there are no fundings for research innovation will be um, hindered so access to funding it's a, a major a major it will be a major advantage from the government if the tech ecosystem can actually have that. Then, like I mentioned um, earlier, also I, I, I spoke about poor internet quality. So having cheap and fast broadband internet nationwide, nationwide would be if we great value. Just imagine like um, having like 100 Starlink servicing every local government in Nigeria. So, I mean, with all of this, if all of these are implemented, we would have a great, um, a great information technology ecosystem in our country, okay. I, which will in turn will impact our economy and drive our economy to our expectation. I, I don't know how much you have followed the manifestos of the uh, politicians, especially those who are vying for the office of the president in Nigeria. Um, if you have, if you have any takeaways from what their manifestos have said, what they have said about the tech or technical, technological advancement in Nigeria, are you comfortable with what any of them has said so far about the development of technology in Nigeria? Um, of course, yes, I have. I mean, everybody mentions um, technology, um, innovation and improvement in their own administration, but we are, we are tending to look into um, the practical aspect of, of all that has been said and i believe personally that we are all waiting to see it happen to see the implementation itself in the practical sense mm. we have been seeing uh, improvement in technology in uh, the previous manifestos in in the past but right now we are all just waiting to see this being implemented because, like I said, it's a major tool for economy um, development and improvement. Okay, well, as a, a tech expert, I'd like to ask you this, because um, 
Uh, a lot of people have placed their faith on the BVAS that is going to be used by INEC or that has been used and will continue to be used by INEC, especially in the forthcoming election. It started in Oshun and uh, Kiti and all that. So how much confidence do you have in the BVAS? I'm, I'm talking to you as a tech person now because some people fear it might be it could be hacked some people fear that it might not give us the kind of results that we want the free and fair elections that we want may not come because of the bivas but a lot of us are speaking from a layman's point of view so as a tech expert how much confidence do you have in the bivas for giving us or as a tool that will give us a better election than the ones we have witnessed in the past um, okay, as a tech um, engineer, um, we have improved from what we used to have in the past. So I have so much trust and belief in the credibility of what is being done so far. We have improved from where we used to be. So I think we would have accurate um, results with the technology that has been proffered. For this exercise okay well uh, it's good to know from someone who is a tech expert that it is good enough because when we begin to argue back and forth and say beavers may not be that game changer that we want when we hear words like this it's really assuring uh, to all of us uh, everything that you have said <clears throat> leads to the fact that the next government should have policies in place that will make it easy for the tech to flourish in our country, Nigeria. Uh, but let's just, as a way of uh, re-emphasizing it, just take it one, uh, in, in summary, what kind of policies do, do you want from the next government that is coming that will make tech, in your own uh, perspective, to grow more than it is growing now? You have said all these things, but just re-emphasize briefly. Um, so this is um, so speaking to the government policies. I mean, I'll speak in general. So the government needs to be consistent with most, especially the regulating policies that would encourage tech firms for a change. So there are regulatory policies that can hamper the tech space. So if we have regulatory policies that are friendly, the tech space can thrive. For instance, if um, getting a license to have um, like uh, like a fintech, the government should look into it and know what needs to be done to reduce um, what is being paid and also regulation in terms of, I mean, because consistently we have improved in terms of career service, most especially in Lagos as a state. But at the end of the day, we have policies that looks as if it's not um, driving in the essence that so much Profits are not being made by the people that brought this innovation. So, what I'm looking forward to a, a regulatory policy that can be friendly, that would improve the okay. tech space. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, well, can I? So, there are all policies around regulation. Okay. Well, Kenechuku, it's been a pleasure having you and the confidence you have restored in us that the BVAS will work and your call on the next government to uh, work around the issue of regulation and also making um, money available for startups and all that. It's, it's good enough. And I'm very sure people who are uh, the powers that be are listening to you right now. Let's hope that after the election of 2023 and the next administration comes, all the uh, solutions that you have proffered here will be looked into. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right.
Well, um, we've been talking with Kenechuku Odaji, who is a tech expert and also a quality assurance engineer. And he has been talking with us about the future of tech and what needs to be done to make sure that sector of our economy flourishes. Mm -hmm.